welcome to the reading room. Today we have the pleasure of welcoming Elmer Omar Boscos Piso, the author of a book of poems, Leaving Our Shadows Behind Us. He has appeared in many anthologies and collections and is the recipient of the Elliot Cades Award for Literature. He is retired and lives in Eva Beach. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Sue, and I want to thank um, you uh -huh. for inviting me in this reading project and to the production unit of the media media video or something. Oh, yeah, Sorry. thank you, the Educational Media Center. Yeah, Media Center's video production unit for the Leeward Community oh, College. Yeah. It's a rare opportunity oh. to be here, so oh. thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, your poems have situations and events that many can re relate to, especially about growing up in the Philippines and immigration to Hawaii. Uh, how would you describe your work? Uh, what do you write about? I write a lot about my experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of considered as autobiographical poems and observations and traditions, the culture, the beliefs, the customs and habits that are passed down from generation to generation, where my roots came from, the locals region in the northernmost part of the Philippines. Uh, it comprises the provinces of Ilocosar. That's where my father's roots are until today. And La Union, my father's mother's side too. And Pangasinan, where my mother's roots are. And so these people who are born in those provinces can relate to my poems. Yeah, they understand. Yeah. And if you want me to give some examples of poetry, I have the identity and the circumcision. Oh, yeah, that, that'll be so great. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a lot of memorable scenes in your book of poems. Um, so leaving our shadows behind us and you know, all of your publications. What is your favorite poem and why is this work your favorite? Uh, actually, my, my favorite is this brown man. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. the brown man. Oh, could, could, uh, yeah. You want me yes, to if you now? could. Thank you so much. But Appreciate I, it. There are, there are stanzas here where I need to sing. Oh, yeah. mm, sure. Brown. Why is the manung's skin not mm. white? Like the color of milk. Brown, brown, nothing else. The color of his favorite barking pet. The color of Hawaiian house, chocolate, macadamia. His niece is creep for in the Philippines. Brown, the color of Manam's dried up tears after dancing into the early hours of morning at a Korean bar on Kiyamoku Street. Brown, the color of dilated pupils in a Manong's eyes. He used Batu day and night. He uses Batu day and night. Brown, the color of his favorite dipping sauce. His wife calls Bagoong smelling like a mouse rotting in a pool of brackish water, brown but flushed, the color of the Manong's face, as he insists he is innocent when the manager of island recycling has found a discrepancy in the weight of five rubbish bags of crushed soda cans and Manong just sold, the Manong just sold. The manager carves out the crumpled bottom of one can then another, corn-sized pebbles falling out of them. Psst, psst. It's not a pop-up tab of a soda can. It's a manong calling out to his friend, seated on a bench, waiting for the bus on a Lakea street. Psst, psst, psst. Hoy! They're the same sound of the manong hears as he walks the cobbled path of Fort Street Mall forcing him to stop and check. Where's the psst, psst had come from? Oh, it's Madame Aurora. He had met her once at Costco Salt Lake, where he helped her load 55 bags of Hinode rice into her Honda Civic. At the time, rumors of an impending strike by the Honolulu longshoremen were floating around. 
Why, you give me a wrong number, she complains. I was trying to call you to find if you want to buy my excess bags of rice. Rice or without rice, bagong or without bagong, the manong is not a bit concerned. He will survive. He can, under, he can run underground drugstores piddling the kind, you know, what the man in blue calls ice. Or he can grow weeds with five-fingered leaves hidden under dense foliage of bitter melon vines, thin and elastic, like the stretched tongues of lizards snapping unwary flies, girls and boys clinging to urine-damaged lampposts on Hotel Street, raw dried buds, the manong supplies. Into joints, they smoke like ordinary cigarettes. The smoke clears their clogged sinuses, and they swear brings them closer to heaven. Then Manong, losing a sizable amount betting on an illegal Sunday cockfight in Eva Beach, later finds himself in a Pearl City, seated at a karaoke bar, taking swigs of gin and tonic, spiked by sips of Heineken to fire up his subdued spirit. <clears throat> he coughs. Suddenly he stands up and he sticks his flat ocole way out. He closes his eyes, watery from thick smoke. He opens his mouth and begins to sing my way. My friend, I'll see it clear. I state my case of which I'm certain. He lifts his closed right fist, suggesting an invisible microphone. Air tickling accents and bad enunciation disregarded, wild applause and catcalls from the tipsy audience drown out his wailing voice. He nods, he smiles, he stomps his extra wide feet, waves his callous hands, enjoying the misplaced adulation, forgetting for a while he's still a brown manong as he belches out the last line of his song. I did it my way. Thank you very much. That's, oh. that's the poem so, that I read in San Francisco. Oh, gosh. And I, mm -hmm. all these Filipino American authors, some of them stood up to their feet, yeah. clapping. Oh, <laughs> I, I love why. it. I love it. <laughs> I, I love your voice in the poem. And I love all the references. You know, you have the Hawaii references, the Philippine reference. And I just, and your poetry just comes to life when you read it. You know, it's just Thank amazing. You. Yeah. Yeah, because. These are natural occurrences. I mm. mean, they are true to life. Mm. Yeah, that I saw in Eva yeah. and back in PI too. So, wow. yeah, I don't know. Uh, those, my Filipino, Filo Filipinos never outgrew their Filipino styles back home. So oh. they bring it here and they do it here and they're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> wow. When I was an inspector, uh -huh. Uh, I was called some, uh, at one time for a bed bug problem at, at um, the prison, oh, 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 Halava, yeah. uh, uh. And bed bugs. Oh, mm, Most yeah. of the population there are Filipinos, so oh. <laughs> they, they were into drugs, that's why they were selling drugs. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. Wow, it, it's it's so good. Like your your poetry brings up so many issues, you yeah. know. Um, the social issues, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About the Filipinos. Wow, I laugh, but no, deep in my heart, I'm kind of, I I pity them a lot. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how they would recover from this kind of stuff mm. that they're doing. Mm. Yeah. Wow, yeah. and and you know. I, I, you know, your, your poetry is so powerful. You know, you have this, like I said earlier, you have a strong voice and the issues that you cover, you know, in your poetry that so many people like here can relate to, you know. Um, oh, yeah, and I, I know you have like a, a, lot, to, a lot to share. <clears throat> I was wondering, the stories and vignettes that you write um, include personal experiences. How do you deal with exposing yourself through your work? Are there topics that you would not write, write about? Um, this is a very sensitive topic too. Mm. 
um, I am I am bearing all what I observe and experience through my poems. Mm -hmm. I remember that uh, Filipino author back in San Francisco who told me flatly that she wasn't into autobiographical poems. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did not get offended. Mm -hmm. I wasn't offended at all. Mm -hmm. So she, she didn't know where I came from. So she, mm -hmm. she, she didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm not also a seeker of truth, although I expose myself and through my experiences, mm -hmm. I just record them as factual, so. Mm. And I present them in its literary form, the poetry, oh. the poem, mm. yeah. And yeah. sometimes I employ the technique of exaggeration, oh. yep. My only point here is to make my, to make the images I'm trying to present present more clear mm -hmm. to the audience, to the reader, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I write, I write journals, I write my diary, mm -hmm. and then convert them into poems oh. later on. Oh, I yeah. see. And then I'm, I'm sure that readers interpret my writings, my poems in so many ways, multiple ways, mm -hmm. according to their own perspective yeah. and I understand that mm -hmm. some of them judge me criticize me mm -hmm. uh, like when I wrote about the abuses of my late father mm -hmm. to me and to my mother mm -hmm. and one of those uh, who happened to come from to come from my own hometown criticized me she bought a book and she, then she told me I was so bold to expose dirty laundry mm -hmm for yeah. the people to see. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She criticized, criticized me as such. Oh. But it was okay, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. So. I, I, I bet there's like a lot of people who might have experienced similar things that oh, yeah. really appreciate you exposing uh, what you experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was uh, reading in San Francisco again, mm. one of these ladies who were in the audience stood up and thanked me yeah. She lost her sister to domestic abuse, mm, yeah. Yeah. and it came, came out. She came from Hilo, Big Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. She had me. She was crying. She was thanking me for her writing about domestic abuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a huge contrast to what my former townmate was telling me, exposing my dirty laundry for everybody to see. Mm. Yeah. It's it's so reassuring that you know you you have different responses to your work you know some positive and some negative I guess as all writers do mm -hmm. but but you keep on writing yeah um, so is, is there something that kind of I inside you that like lets you keep on going or yearns to write I would like still to write about what's going on mm -hmm. I'd like to write about the political situation in the country, but I know I will be taking in a lot of criticisms, but I'm not scared. But the only thing is these kinds of criticisms are coming from this an open minds to say the least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an open minds. And and so what's the use? Yeah. Is yeah. there is there anything that you wouldn't write about? I would like to write about this. This is a very sensitive topic. It's, uh, I wanted to write about the LGBTQ community. Oh. Mm. Yeah, an honest and a straight, straightforward view coming from a street guy like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm very aware that m some members or most of them are very sensitive. Mm. So it happened to me when I was in, in San Francisco again. This time it was in December of 20. I mean, 2000, I was there participating in the San Francisco, um, there was Franci San Francisco Writers Workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, it was um, moderated by Tamim Ansari. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, the guest there. Mm -hmm. And then I was reading a poem regarding um, 
uh, morning, in morning. It's about the procession of jet black, black, all kinds of black people wearing all these kinds of black. And then I was describing when they entered the church patio and there was a statue of Christ clutching his bleeding heart. Mm. And all of a sudden I hear this screaming oh. guy mm. standing up, waving at me. Oh. Yeah, mm. he, was, he was so mad. And he said I was attacking the gay community because of that bleeding heart oh, stuff I that know. I said. Oh. And mm. uh, one el elderly lady who was a participant in that workshop mm. tried to count him down, but he wouldn't, wow. he wouldn't listen. Wow. He was insistent that I was really against the LGBTQ community. Oh, interesting, yeah. 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 I guess well, whenever there's creative writing, there's all these different interpretations yeah, by, by the audience, you know, of, um, regardless of what your intent, you know, of the writing is. Um, yeah, it, you know, I, I know there's a lot of writers that sometimes they might be afraid to write about certain topics, but what, what advice would you give them? Um, that's kind of <laughs> sensitive too. Oh. Um, I would just like them to be honest, mm -hmm. to be true yeah. to themselves. Yeah. Then, 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 don't let the flame die within themselves. I mean, yeah. yeah. They, if they want to write, write. They want to keep those writings. They keep them. They want to share it to the world. They try it. Yeah. yeah. It's up to the world to accept them, and be patient. Don't rush into writing. You have to grow slowly, build on your vocabulary. Sorry, I stammer too because of all these medications mm -hmm. I'm taking. Um, yeah. They have to be perseverant, persevering, mm -hmm. persevering. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They have to be patient. Sure, yeah. But then they have to find their voice. Mm. It's true. The voice within, all, again, it's the voice within. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, we talk a lot about the writing process, you know, uh, on our show, and also when you know we visit various schools and uh, students want to learn about writing. Uh, describe your writing process. My writing process is very simple. Mm -hmm. I just sit down when I have an idea that haunts me at no end. Mm -hmm. I will just sit down in front of my desktop, open the word. And then I listen to Hawaiian music alternately with the Philippine, original Filipino music and reggae. Uh -huh. And then that keeps me going. Mm -hmm. it, the, the music kind of stimulates my neurotransmitters yeah, yeah. Yeah, to work. So until I keep on pounding, I can't. I can sit in front of a desktop for the whole day. I only leave my chair when I need to go to the bathroom or eat mm. and come back and do it again. But sometimes there are, there are those times when I can produce only one sentence, even a fragment or fragments, and that's all. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I, I'm still writing. I still believe that I can still contribute something. Not necessarily for my, my own glory or something. I'm not seeking that. I'm not even expecting awards. I just write. But I just wanted to write. Maybe to inspire even one person. Yeah. I'm, I'm very happy. I think my, my, my writing is fulfilled by inspiring one person. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, and, and, you know, based on, because I've heard you read and, you know, I, I know you, you inspire so many students, you know, when they hear you read your work. So, yeah. Um, a question about language. Uh, since English is a second language, were there challenges in uh, maintaining authenticity oh, yeah. in your creative work? And um, well, what is your advice for, for it, that? It is very difficult to maintain authenticity. Mm -hmm. But then just listen to your own voice. Again, I have got to come back to what I said earlier. Be honest. Um, stick to what you believe in. And 
even if they have um, some, some people say something about you just to fit in to what they want so that they can accept you, doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you 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 prepare to be rejected. Yeah. You know, I'm so glad that you brought that up because I know a lot of times, you know, in, in national publications, you know, um, like the, the you have a certain genre, you mm -hmm. know, that might cater to like um, maybe maybe a ma mainland audience, you know. But I notice way with your writing and a lot of um, authors in Hawaii, um, there's like the, the language and culture is celebrated and the respected. Insects, yeah, yeah, the rodents, yeah. the rats yeah. and the cats, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all you know, we respected and um, the story stories are told, you know, very, very brave stories, so yeah. Yeah, um, the reason why I have this mostly kind of more into imagery, mm -hmm. if you read my poems, mm -hmm. I read a lot about Basho oh, yeah. and the other three, um, three Japanese oh, yeah. masters, oh, mm -hmm. haiku masters, yeah. and I was fascinated, mm -hmm. yeah, with their work, oh, yeah, so. Oh, yeah. I did not copy them, but oh, no. I, I tried to <laughs> go inside their minds and understand how they wrote yeah. their stuff. And yeah. I think I'm kind of a little bit successful. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. You're, you're very successful. <laughs> you know? I really, I'm um, not bragging about <laughs> it, though. <laughs> no, no, I think a, a, a lot of people really appreciate your unique voice. And um, a, a lot of students, I know, uh, when they read your work, they appreciate seeing themselves. We, or their family, you know, within your work. And it, you know, and your work is literature. So, you know, having so much respect to your story, you know, gives students uh, respect to their own stories. So, so thank you <laughs> for thank all you of your writing. Uh, when I was on Kauai, mm -hmm. uh, December of 2019, I, I discussed my writing process with the students there, first year and second year high school under Mr. Jonathan Medeiros. Mm -hmm. And he invited me to go there. And when I was speaking about culture and everything, and then all these poems that I read, mm -hmm. I share with them, there were three Filipino students that just recently immigrated to Kauai. Mm -hmm. And they were happy that they met somebody, they said, that speak their language. I spoke to them in Ilocano. That's, that's our main language there in the northern part of Luzon. So they were so happy. And all those other students of other ethnicities were kind of surprised. Yeah. I, I told them, don't be ashamed. Talk. But they said they notice every time our accent. Well, try to grow. Try to assimilate. Improve. Yeah. 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 I'm so glad that, you know, you you have students, you know, be proud of their heritage, mm -hmm. you know, their culture, because yeah. I, I know like a lot of times, you know, I know like being American, you know, there's that pressure to assimilate, you know, as if there's only one way to be American, you know, yeah. so yeah. But then no matter what, even me, I'm a Filipino American. I converted into American CIA. Oh. I was of FBI before, for blood in Ilocano, and oh. then I became a CIA after three years, converted into American. And, but still, how can I be an American? I'm dark, oh. my nose is pudgy. No. <laughs> nothing, nothing to show that I'm American. Oh, Even my, my accent is different, oh. so. I, I think, I think, it's so important that you bring up these issues yeah. because I think in the past there was maybe only one version of what American was. Yeah, yeah. that's and, true. Yeah, and, and now, now thank goodness there's mm -hmm. um, uh, more attention to diversity and that's um, the main thing. Yeah, re yeah, being respectful to all Americans. Yeah. But then, you. as I said a while ago, before uh, taping this, it, America is getting worse. Sorry. <sighs> Mm -hmm. I'm kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Instead of the America that I knew of before, I knew of and I know of America is decreasing. Mm -hmm. Sad to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of, of divisiveness um, mm -hmm. within the 
uh, within the news nowadays. And yeah, I, I, I agree with um, what you said. Um, now, a question on, I, I know, you know, you, you write a lot and um, is there a chance for writer's block? I know you kind of mentioned it a little yeah. bit. And, and what is your cure for it? You know, I'm into carving, wood carving. Yeah, I found that talent when I was in prison in Saudi Arabia. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. One time I was, I was outside for an exercise. Uh, we, have, we were given one hour daily walk outside the prison yard. So I saw all these scattered planks of wood. Mm -hmm. And then I thought maybe I could cut something. Oh. And then I asked the guard if he could lend me his knife and watch me with his gun. I wasn't doing anything oh, yeah. except to carve. Mm. And I said, can I do something? I asked him and he said, what you gonna, what you gonna do with the wood? Yeah. I told him I would carve the symbol of Saudi Arabia, oh. the, the date palm and the cross sword. Mm. And I did, I was able to do it and I was so happy. Oh. He brought it to his captain and then the captain took a liking of my stuff and Ever since that time, he asked me to get out earlier and spend time with him carving and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I see. Oh, so that's how you learn yeah. all the skills. Of, I, I never know that I could carve. Yeah, because I, cause I know you're, you, you know, you talk about wood carving, but yeah. I, I didn't know how you learned it, you know? I know, so, it just came oh, naturally. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I don't know why. I'm not bragging again. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's good. You have so many skills. Seriously. You no, know, yeah. I just, I'm just being guided maybe um, somebody up there oh. watching over me yeah yeah wow. i cheated death a lot of times too oh. that's so where i'm proud of wow. yeah. so many things to write about you yeah. know it's like so interesting you know yeah. you have an interesting life yeah remember when i was being whipped in saudi arabia oh my goodness yeah yeah, yeah. 25 oh. times every friday oh, for more than three months Oh, and being so. paraded there as an example, not to do what I did. Mm. I lead on a strike and they didn't like it. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, so even they, then you, you yeah, knew to follow. They, they always treated me, those guards, they would say, Anta in Charmutsadi. Oh. Something like, we will kill you, my friend. Wow. They called me my friend. They called me a friend when they were intending to kill me. I, I replied, Mafi Moshkila, no problem. It's so you still have yeah. the courage and the strength to yeah. rebel, though. Yeah. You know, even with all of those. You know, I was born like that, I think. Wow, yeah. that's courage. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and now I guess for for my last question. Yes, ma'am. You know, you're an award-winning author. Many people, as as we said earlier, appreciate your work and discuss your work Thank in you classrooms so much to all those too. People. Yeah. Think of a time before all the publications. Uh, what advice do you have for anyone who wants to be a writer? Uh, I think I have it here. Yeah. Especially that English is my second language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very difficult. Oh. Yeah, but I was lucky that I went to an Episcopalian seminary before. Mm -hmm. See, I'm supposed to be a priest, Anglican oh. priest, wow. but the Lord didn't like me, I think, so he kicked me out. Oh. Yeah, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> then, um, there I learned a lot of English because mm -hmm. all my professors were Americans and from England. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I pick up with Engli the English language. I'm just fortunate again. Mm -hmm. So, but then my advice to them is keep on reading mm -hmm. and Keep on learning the English language, the grammars, the rules, the punctuations, the organization of sentences, the structure, everything that involves a good, good writing that is still stands out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, and then be patient again. Yeah. Be persevering again. Don't give up. A lot of rejections will come. I have more than like Michael Jordan. I have more than 500 rejections all over. And I was published until now. If I count those published works, I have only, I think, 78 or 87 poems. Oh. So, wow. 
wow, all over. That's amazing. Yeah. I can tell in your heart, your heart, you're a writer, you know, among other, other, so many things, you know. Oh, but, well, thank you so much for sharing thank, your work. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank oh, you so much. My goodness. I didn't expect at all that no. someday I'll be contributing something to to the literature of Hawaii. Oh, and yes. you helped me a lot, the late Madam Marie Hara, oh. Eric Chark, Daryl Lam, oh. Joy, oh, yeah. and Madam Juliet, oh. everybody was telling me, keep on writing, keep on writing, yeah. keep on writing. Oh. Every time they see me, keep on writing. And then Eric, Eric Schaeffer, oh, Eric oh, Schaeffer, oh, oh, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, my yeah, friend. Yeah, no, 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 there's I, so I many didn't writers. Intend to forget about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but thank you, thank you. Yeah. And, oh, mm. goodness, well, well, thanks so much for your thank time. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for joining us in the reading thank room. Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, we would like to thank uh, Elmer Omar Bosco Piso for joining us. Thank you. Uh, mahalo. Au ia oe. Thank you very much.